Hey y'all, Scott here. The Smash Brothers series has been the victim of countless leaks and rumors, as it's one of the most popular franchises ever constructed. With this popularity comes a thick stack of lame photoshopped farce, so I thought it'd be fun to take a look at most leaks and rumors involved with the franchise. So get ready to enter that realm of incompetency, cause we're gonna look at some garbage! Starting off humbly with Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo 64, there weren't many rumors floating violently around for this one, mainly due to the modern internet being in its infancy at the time and this title being the first of the franchise. There are mainly two rumors associated with the game, the first being that various CPU controlled characters in the game were playable, these characters being Master Hand, the Fighting Polygons, Giant Donkey Kong, and Metal Mario. These characters cannot be played as in the game without the aid of hacking, thus this rumor was significantly busted. There were also murmurings about characters originally planned to make their playable Smash Bros. debut in this game. Peach, Wario, Meowth, Pit, Bowser, King DDD, and Mewtwo were all rumored to be planned for Smash 64. However, Bowser, DDD, and Mewtwo are the only characters that were officially planned for the game. Bowser and DDD actually had a fair amount of work done on them, but they were scrapped possibly due to time constraints. With Mewtwo, it's actually unknown if any work was done on him at all. Meowth was rumored to have been scrapped in favor of Jigglypuff, but there was never any evidence suggesting Meowth was even planned for the game. Sigurd from Fire Emblem was also rumored to have been planned, but this is a pretty baseless rumor, no factual evidence of this actually exists. However, Marth was considered for Smash 64, but was not fully realized due to time constraints. The rumor of Pit being planned also came with a little dollop of insider info that he was scrapped due to the complications with animating his wings. However, Push Dustin from Source Gaming makes a great point that this would have easily been brought up by Sakurai when Pit was revealed for Brawl. Hello everybody and welcome to Critique That Leak, the first game show since Are You Smarter Than 5th Grade to exploit preteens, but this time with their Photoshop skills. Critique That Leak is brought to you by Concrete Matter. There's nothing better to start your day off with. Concrete Matter! Well, let's critique some leaks! Welcome back! Our first leak here is the Notorious Rayman DLC leak. This was released around February 2015, and nobody really debunked this when it came out. In fact, Ubisoft even said they were going to make a statement about this, because a bunch of outlets started coming out to them and saying, like, hey, is this real? Do you have anything to comment on this? Ubisoft was originally going to make a statement, and then the person behind the leak came out and said, I did this, this is fake, and that was Artsy Omni of Smashified. And this was actually a promotional stunt to advertise his YouTube show, Smashified, in which he and other artists take much beloved and very anticipated characters for Smash Brothers and, you know, makes them in a Smash 4-esque style to basically show what their render would look like in Smash Brothers. So overall, I don't really have anything to critique about this leak. It was so well done that nobody really was able to debunk it until it was debunked by the leaker itself. So. I'm pretty okay with this. No critique for this leak. No. Double no! I'm actually quite a big fan of this leak. This is basically showing that as DLC, a classic classic mode was gonna come, which basically mimicked the entirety of Smash 64's classic mode. Uh, I like it. I didn't know the E3 demo for Smash Brothers was supposed to be a mess. Whoa, hold on there, buddy. There's a demo for the DLC? Dude, you're gonna get slaughtered out there. This is some high class information. What are you doing leaking this? Moving abruptly over to Melee, this is where rumors really start to crank up a bit. One of the biggest rumors pertaining to Melee is Sonic and Tails being unlockable fighters. This rumor was brought to us by Electronic Gaming Monthly, and it is said that if one would frighteningly defeat 20 enemies in Cruel Melee, they would be treated to a fight with Sonic and Tails and winning would obviously unlock them. Many believe this report by EGM to be true, however EGM was notorious for their April Fools pranks, and this was merely another one of them. Alas, Sonic was close to being featured in Melee, but due to time constraints, it failed to happen. Geocities.com reported that Toad was an unlockable after achieving a perfect score in the credits minigame, completing adventure mode afterwards while defeating all the Yoshis in the Mushroom Kingdom section. However, this was easily disproven. All the screenshots Geocities provided were edits of the Toad model from adventure mode. Some speculated that three characters prominently featured in Melee's opening cinematic were considered, planned, or scrapped as playable characters. However, Ridley, Wolf, and Samurai Goro were actually never any of these. Wario was heavily considered for Melee, so much so that Sakura has stated that if he could create one more character for the game, it would have been Wario. However, many misquote him here and have reported Sakurai considered Wario to be a clone of Mario, but deciding against this, as Wario deserved better. There's actually no evidence of Sakurai ever saying this. Meta Knight's render is basically the same as Brawl's leak harder next time. We gotta pick up the Ice Climbers in action here, but why do they take a picture of the gamepad? There's probably like a really nice TV in this room too, and he decides to pick a picture of the gamepad. I got nothing. Shit. This is beautiful. 
This all looks pretty good until you realize Ness is Lucas from Brawl and that is Diddy Kong's render from Tropical Freeze. I'm sorry. This is a bit of a neat leak because this was actually released after Mewtwo was announced as DLC, but before Lucas was announced as DLC, so it's kind of interesting to see that the leaker actually really did predict two of the first DLC characters for Smash Bros. 4. However, here's the thing, I believe some pretty crazy stuff, but that is just preposterous! Brawl is not only much more riddled with speculation and rumors, but leaks now as well, with the internet being a more prominent entity during the development of the game. During a supposed radio interview with Sakurai, it was revealed that Ridley, a cel-shaded Link a la Wind Waker, and Bowser Jr. were playable characters, while Young Link, the Ice Climbers, and Mr. Game & Watch were all cut from the roster. This was just wrong. Also, nowadays, this would have been debunked immediately. Masahiro Sakurai is the Grand Minister of Secrets and actually takes pride in the surprise and celebration of new Smash characters. It just wouldn't make any sense for him to reveal three big newcomers over a radio show, especially when the Smash Dojo was up and running, a blog in which Sakurai revealed new elements and characters for Brawl. At the Wabi Game Festival in Japan, it was reported that a playable demo of Brawl housed unrevealed assist trophies of Rosalina from Super Mario Galaxy, Duster from Mother 3, and Muddy Mole from Mole Mania. These rumors were shot down, however, as many others who played the demo did not see these assist trophies, and evidence of these characters in Brawl's code is nowhere to be found. After Snake was revealed for Brawl, Sakurai said there was a possibility that one or two more third-party characters could appear. This cranked up speculation after Sonic was revealed, as there was still a potential one other third party. Many thought of Capcom's Mega Man as the final third-party rep, however, Snake and Sonic were the only outsiders in Brawl. Before DLC became a prominent feature in the series with Smash 4, it was heavily rumored to be in Brawl. A fake website popped up online mimicking a Nintendo press release. The We Want More service was detailed, stating that four new characters and two new stages were on their way to Brawl, alongside new content for Mario Kart Wii, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, and Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. The new content was going to drop on May 13th, 2008, it was fake. Due to the Wii's incredibly minuscule storage capacity and rough online, DLC for Brawl was considered but never came to fruition. Apparently Brawl was the last Smash game, what unfortunate! With taglines claiming one Brawl to end them all and Sakurai reportedly saying Brawl was the last game, many had a hearty dose of right to believe Brawl was the swan song of the franchise. Alas, the tagline was simply referring to how grandiose Brawl was, basically saying this game is so big it could be the final one! And Sakurai actually said he was making Brawl as if it was the last game, packing in as much content and fan service as humanly possible. Most major leaks for Brawl weren't treated as legitimate by many at all when they first appeared. Most users who posted potential information about Brawl were generally shunned for being stupid, dumb, stupid, and wrong. Chaos Zero was a GameFAQs user who had insider info about Brawl in October of 2007. His leak included the return of Falco, Ganondorf, Captain Falcon, Ness, and Sheik, the inclusion of Wolf, Lucario, and Sonic, Mewtwo getting axed, the Dragoon as an item, Stage Builder, and Final Destination returning. Nyase Nya held notoriety for being obsessed with Peach on Smash Bros. however he did have information pertaining to Brawl before it was released. He stated that Brawl would have 35 characters if one would count characters with transformations as one character each, Alamar and Toon Link being included, Mr. Game & Watch, Ness, and Captain Falcon returning, the exclusion of the much desired Ridley and Mega Man as playable characters, the game being delayed and released on a dual layered disc, and the date Sonic would be revealed on. Nobody believed him, with a user even editing his post claiming he was lying and locking the thread. Shadow Zor was able to test Brawl and revealed some information via Smash Ports, being the inclusion of Rob and the return of Marth, Ness, and Captain Falcon. However, most did not believe this information due to Rob already being revealed as an enemy in the Subspace Emissary. Lucario, Jigglypuff, and Ness were accidentally prematurely shown in a promotional video for Brawl on January 21st, 2008. Stickers are highlighted showing compatibility with said characters, confirming them to be playable. However, the video was taken down shortly after it was posted. I'm so sad. This is actually an April Fool's prank. That is Nestor, a character that originated from Nintendo Power Magazine. So surely, this can't take a critique. But Jesus, man, what's up with that background? It looks like they got the tools from Michaels to make that thing. I dig the GameCube-style polygonal model they're sporting here. Not bad. Ooh, a mystery character! Too bad the other characters look like garbage! I like this one. This one's good. This one's actually really good. I like this one. 
Watch out, Mario! He's behind you! This was apparently gonna be Mewtwo in the Subspace Emissary and Brawl, and this looks better than most of the Smash 4 leaks today. This was made in Brawl's era. Why? This was released before Sonic and Pac-Man were announced for Smash Bros. 4, and get this, I've seen worse. Come on, man, these are literally trophies from the game. But I will give extra points for Chibi Robo in there. This one ain't half bad. I love angles. Want to see a tragedy unfold in 12 seconds? You see, the Adventure Mode button is garish enough to fit into Smash 4's hodgepodge of a menu system, but that character select screen needs to go away and think about what it's done. This league is actually supposed to mimic what Smash 4 would be like if it was an arcade game, and I actually like this one. It looks very clean and it looks very professional. I dig. Wow, I'm gonna have to call the real patrol on this one, because this is too real. Smash 4 is really when we get down to the knit riddle grit. Announced in 2011, Smash 4 definitely had the most rumors and leaks of any Smash game, no question. One of the first major rumors was titled Super Smash Bros. Universe. Posted on 4chan, the document details tripping being removed and more third-party representatives and reveals the title to be Super Smash Bros. Universe, both with English and Japanese logos. However, Sakurai made it clear that Smash 4 would not start development until the completion of Kid Icarus Uprising, which was around six months away from releasing at the time of this leak. Super Smash Bros. Memories! It's a 3DS game with a focus on retro characters. Playable characters include Pac-Man, Mock Rider, Stanley the Bugman, and Dig Dug. The Wii U's title was not disclosed, however it should be focused more on modern characters. Thanks Zelda Informer! This rumor circulated in early 2012 and I hate to break it to you guys but it's more of a probability than a possibility this was fake. On December 12, 2012, a supposed Namco employee going by the username Halibutend claimed the next Smash game would be revealed via Nintendo Direct on Brawl's 5th birthday, January 31st, 2013. Newcomers set to be revealed were Takamaru, King K. Rool, Little Max, Shulk, Ridley, Dylan, Girahim, a Platinum Games character, possibly being Wonder Red, and a Debu, possibly a character from a rumored Yoshi game, potentially being Yoshi's Woolly World. Stages were also planned to be revealed, these being Starship Mario from Super Mario Galaxy 2, Giant Chasm from Pokemon Black version 2 and White version 2, Pushmo Park from Pushmo, and Cookie Country from Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Of course, the date of the speculated direct came and went, meaning Halibutan faded into the realm of irrelevancy. One of the most well-known potential leaks in Smash Bros. history was the Gamatsu leak. I say potential because we still don't know if the leaker behind this was partially right or just had some luck encrusted guesses. E3 2013 rolls around and before the Nintendo Direct premiered, Gamatsu got a tip that the characters of Villager, Mega Man, Wii Fit Trainer, Pac-Man, Little Mac, and the Miis were to be playable in Smash 4. The first three were then subsequently revealed as playable characters, and while Villager and Mega Man were somewhat safe guesses, nobody ever expected Wii Fit Trainer, giving this leak a thick honkin' supply of credibility. By February of 2014, all the new characters, with the exception of Rosalina and Luma, were correctly predicted by the Gamatsu leaker. When the Smash Bros. Direct in April 2014 was approaching, Gamatsu received yet another tip from the leaker, stating that Pac-Man and the Miis were still a go and were to be revealed later, while confirming the existence of Krom, the Chorus Kids, Palutena, Shulk, and a Pokemon from X and Y as playable characters. At the tail end of the Smash Direct, Greninja, a Pokemon from X and Y, was revealed. E3 2014 comes and Miis, Palutena, and Pac-Man come alongside it. At this point, almost everybody believes the Gamatsu leak. In July 2014, Sakurai reveals plans to introduce a new Challenger trailer via a livestream. Many believe the trailer was to be Shulk, with Monolith Soft retweeting the announcement of the livestream and the Gamatsu leaker sending an email stating, I only know what has been done, not what or when they will be made available. Sakurai may change his mind and he does all the time. Shulk will not be changed. However, not only was the leaker wrong about Shulk, the leaker was wrong about Krom. The trailer showcased the new Fire Emblem reps being Robin and Lucina, with Krom only being a part of Robin's final smash. Gamatsu never got any word from the leaker since, and it is still unknown if they actually had insider information for some of the leak, or just made everything up. In early 2014, a few pictures were shared online which showcased 3DS screenshots of Palutena and Mario on Battlefield. At the time, nobody really debunked the supposed leak. Sakurai even shared a statue of Palutena as his Miiverse pick of the day, suggesting that Sakurai knew about the picture. 
Later that June, Palutena was officially confirmed as a character in Smash 4, however her model differed slightly from the leak. In the end, it turned out the initial leak was just a well done hoax. A few months before Super Smash Bros. for Wii U launched, a rumor was floating around forums typically coined as the Tower of Smash Leak. This detailed the functionality of linking the 3DS version to the Wii U version and gaining additional playable characters being Ridley, Chorus Men, Dixie Kong, Mewtwo, and Impa. The rumor stated that all characters and stages would be unlocked from the start. The leaker returned later with a full stage list. This added some credibility to the leaker as a few stages were revealed that correlated with the leak. With the 3DS offering Smash Run as its exclusive mode, this rumor detailed the Wii U's mode being Tower of Smash. The Tower of Smash was supposed to be a 100 level gauntlet in which the player was to go through 100 levels of the tower, playing a match on each floor with different rule sets. This was a relatively believable rumor, however, it was dismissed after some discovered a screenshot of the Wii U character select screen, showing some characters that have yet to be unlocked, such as Falco or Mr. Game & Watch. Hey, based on my indecision on whether to make this a game show or a talk show, we have a caller. You're on the air. Hey, Scott. Long time caller, first time listener. Leaky Steve? Our leaker on the field? What are you doing here? I can't help myself, man. I'm gonna start leaking if I can't help myself. Oh no, here I go again. Wait a minute, Leaky Steve. Are you sending us an exclusive leak? Sure am. Now I trust you with every potential leak, Leaky Steve, but I think you're gonna have to prove yourself to our loyal audience. All right, fine. Just in case you guys don't trust me, here's a picture of my foot to prove that I'm real. Is this how all leakers take pictures? I better scram. I've shown too much, but I'll send you that leak eventually. August of 2014, that leak happened. The biggest leak in Smash Brothers history. On August 19th, a user posts a picture going through every Smash Brothers character to date, alongside new ones with X's over characters that were to be cut from Smash 4. The only exception was Mewtwo, who had a question mark over his picture. Then Mr. Motherfucking Leaker swoops in and just vomits this garbage out. The entire character select screen, stage select, the menus, everything was revealed. Now, I remember when this leak came out, and I personally didn't buy it at first. I thought to myself that people can do amazing things, and with 3D modeling becoming more and more doable by your average Joes, some people can perfectly recreate Nintendo style. Of course, this train of thought was just a waste of energy. Many attempted to disprove the leak, pointing out inconsistencies, such as the thicker line down here. However, this was actually more so adding credibility to the leaks, as that's just something that the 3DS character select screen does. The placement of the clones and Yoshi were questioned, many thought Shulk was simply an edited picture of Little Max, some believe Wario's right pupil was missing. These inconsistencies were all either false or just another reason to hop on Masahiro Sakurai's wild ride, that character placement still irks me! A scan from Famitsu was later released showcasing the Tomodachi life stage which correlated heavily with the picture of the stage shown on the leak, revealing angles of the apartment that weren't seen before. About a week later from the original leak, video was posted online showing Shulk, Bowser Jr., Ganondorf, Charizard, and Lucina all in action. While some were grasping onto the hope that this was just an impressive brawl hack, most had come to the conclusion that the leak was real. On top of this, a solid 12 gallons worth of screenshots were unloaded onto the internet, showing trophies, menus, and so much more of the game. Interestingly, a trophy of Tharja from Fire Emblem Awakening was shown in the leak, but this trophy doesn't appear in the final game. Due to the suggestive nature of Tharja as a character, her trophy may have been removed to avoid rating complications. Finally, on August 29th, Shulk was revealed at the beginning of a Japanese Nintendo Direct, sporting the exact same render as the leak. This entire ordeal stemmed from a video Nintendo sent to the ESRB to rate the game, and oh boy oh boy this was a doozy. During a Smash 3DS intro video posted on Nintendo's Japanese YouTube page on August 29th, Ganondorf was accidentally revealed in an off-screen indicator. This video was removed and re-uploaded with the scene edited. Before the Smash Bros. 50 Fact Extravaganza video was livestreamed, Amazon.com leaked multiple new features contained in the Wii U version of Smash 4. These features included the all-new Stage Builder, Master and Crazy Orders, and Smash Tour. Around the time Mewtwo was released as DLC, data miners discovered the victory and stage themes for Roy from Fire Emblem and Ryu from Street Fighter within the update data. This led to speculation on whether this was just thrown in there for a few laughs and chuckles or these characters were actually going to be DLC. Well, before E3 2015 was about to kick off, Nintendo scheduled a Smash Bros. livestream in which Masahiro Sakurai would reveal new content coming to the game. A mere day before the livestream commenced, an update was put out for Smash Bros. too early and data miners were able to look through it. Within the file, they were able to find the classic mode victory cinematic for both Roy and Ryu, confirming their place as DLC characters. People were then able to hack the game to play as these characters before their announcement, alongside playing on DLC stages such as Dreamland 64 and Suzaku Castle. 
This spoiled almost the entirety of the livestream, as this was the majority of the content revealed. The update was then released directly after the stream. That should do it for today. Of course, I didn't cover every single Smash Brothers leak and rumor ever conceived, but I mainly wanted to focus on the major ones and a few of the smaller ones here and there, so I think we covered that pretty well. Of course, if you remember a specific Smash Brothers leak or rumor back in the day, please leave a comment down yonder. And while I wait for said comment, Leaky Steve ended up sending me this big Smash Brothers leak, so I gotta check it out.